Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for your, uh, your time this afternoon. Uh, my name is Rob Hargreaves. I'm going to be delivering a uh, webinar on Waterdesk Vault. If any of you have seen my um, other demonstrations, um, the, the, the sort of full solution demonstration for Vault, and hopefully there'll be a few new things in this, uh, this presentation for you, the things that I don't regularly show on the, uh, the regular Vault training, uh, sorry, Vault demonstration. Okay, so let's dive straight in. Okay, you should now see my, uh, my PowerPoint screen. Um, so this, this presentation um, is entitled Making Vault Work For You. Um, in order for us to, to demonstrate this, we really have to think about who you are and what your role is within the organization. So we're gonna look at tools which are specific to design engineers, uh, design managers, uh, production managers, I say manager, but this could be anybody in the production department, uh, similarly with a project manager or a project engineer, and a, a quality manager. So looking at some of the uh, very specific tools which aren't exclusive to these particular roles, um, but can be used by, maybe predominantly by those, uh, those um, people within the organisation. So let's have a look at the design engineer tools. Design engineers spend a lot of the time in Inventor. That's where we're going to uh, spend the next uh, next ten minutes or so. So we're going to open up an assembly. I make use of some of the uh, the, the Vault in CAD tools. Okay. So just a quick check to make sure I've got Vault. We're definitely signed in. So we have a simple assembly here. I want to make a change to a part. Now, non-Vault users traditionally would just dive in and start making the change, um, but we really have to consider um, the implications of making that change. We need to understand a little bit more about that particular part. Now we can go back into the Vault client and start looking through the Vault client for that part to understand its role within uh, the, the, the general picture of the design. Um, what we can do though, is we're gonna use these show details here on the Vault tab. So the Show Details panel gives us what looks like the, the lower preview pane within the Vault Explorer client. So you can see at the moment, because there's nothing actually selected, it's just the, uh, the assembly, we're looking at the information on the assembly. So we get the History tab, the Uses tab, Where Used, and we can see Change Orders and Related Items. Now if I go and click on a part within uh, Inventor, it changes the Show Details panel to show us details for that selected part. You can see there we've got the top uh, exhaust part selected. This one here. The part we're interested in is this uh, this cover. So I'm going to select the cover, and I can see this file is at work in progress. So we need to make sure it's at work in progress before we can make a change. We also need to understand if I make a change to this, what other files is it going to affect? So we've got the users and the where used tabs. So the users very quickly. Let's make sure it's not a derived part from anywhere else. No, nope. so it's a standalone part, and we can see under where used. Uh, okay, so it's just used in this assembly and in turn in this drawing. So this will tell me or give me, me two indicators. One is that I'm not going to affect any other assemblies by, by making a change to this part. And secondly, it tells me which files I need to follow up the tree to update once I've updated this one. So we'll need to update the, the, the blower assembly and the, uh, the DPG as well. So this panel helps me understand the implications of, of making a change to a part in CAD without having to uh, leave um, and search through the Vault client. Okay, so let's just uh, close this panel down. And we're going to make the, uh, the changes. So let's go and check this file out. Now you can see we can right click and we have a Vault uh, menu within, uh, within Inventor. So we can come in and check this panel out. And we did say we needed to make a change to the assembly as well. So we'll check the assembly out at the same time. Click OK. And I'm going to, uh, to place a, a, a sketch on the front face of this. So let's just activate it. Sketch on the front face. All the way up. And I'm going to place uh, an image onto this, uh, this panel. So you can see we've got a danger label there that I want to place on here. It's going to be closer. Let's flip this other way up. Okay. 
Okay. Commit a change to the part. The next thing I want to do is I want to bring in another part to this assembly. Now, in reality, what I'm not doing out, I'm not, I'm not actually bringing a part in, I'm creating a part from scratch, but rather than uh, sit and model a part um, on a Vault webinar, what I've done is I'm going to place it. I'm just going to place the component. Pull it in from my files here. Now I'm placing it in from outside the, uh, the Vault project. You'll see why in a second. So we'll place that in there. You can't see anything because what it is, it's a document pocket that we're going to place on the end of this cover. And it's going to contain wiring diagrams and, and safety cards and warning cards for the, uh, for the electro electrical um, wiring for the, uh, the motor and the, um, the power supply in here. So let's just have a look at that document pocket. Now there's a few features in here. I'm just going to drag this down a couple of features at a time. We can see it's building up the parts. Okay, so it's a simple part, but again, it's a vault demonstration, so I didn't want to sit here and model this from scratch. But what I do want to do is I want to make sure that this part doesn't already exist somewhere in the vault. Okay, so I know that we use these document pockets on other assemblies. So let's just see if this particular one is already in vault. Now, what we're doing here is going to use a duplicate search. Now, I might have wasted a bit of time creating the model in the first place, but there's also a lot of time involved in downstream management of those models. So if you've got a model and you want to make sure there's nothing else in the vault that, uh, that matches that model, and we're not talking about uh, matching file names and dates and sizes, it actually matches the model geometry. So it finds duplicates of that model geometry. So let's do a quick search now. So on the vault tab, we've got find duplicates. If I go and select my component and run a search. Okay, so it's found other instances of that particular shape inside my vault. So again, yes, I've wasted a bit of time modeling it, but I'm not going to waste time going forward managing this model downstream, managing its life cycles and making sure it's up to date and, and raising change orders and things on it. So what I'm going to do is rather than use the model I've created, I'm going to replace the model from the one in Vault. Now it's just because the uh, constraints are slightly different. So it's warning me that it's replaced the model. So you can see down here, it's still selected. So that document pocket has now been replaced by a duplicate model from Vault, the M178-4001. So this means I no longer have to spend all that time managing this file downstream. Okay, so this duplicate search, will you can specify whereabouts in the vault to search for duplicates, or you can say just keep a, a duplicate index of the whole vault, uh, and it will index in the background, so we can run these searches. Just to hit plus there to run a new search, pick a part, run a search. I don't expect there to be uh, duplicates, so there's no duplicates of that particular part in the vault. Okay, let's close that duplicates down. At this point, we can go and check the files back in. So we'll go to the Vault tab. We'll hit Save first. And check the files back in. And notice it's not trying to check in an additional part. It's just going to check in the drive casing cover and the blower because we already have the document pockets in Vault. So now this assembly references that already existing document pocket. Okay, so a couple of tools there, the, the show details and the find duplicates panel, some in-CAD tools there um, that aren't frequently used, aren't, aren't used anywhere near as much as they should be. Okay, staying in this model, we're going to look at what a design manager might make use of in the vault. So in-CAD reports, Vault Client reports, and a little bit about um, some little search tips as well within the Vault Client. Okay, so staying with this model, we're going to have a look at um, the in-CAD reports. And what this allows me to do is, if we split the, the data mapping panel here, let's just move the model back into, uh, into view. And there are a number of report templates that come with Vault. I'm going to select the in-CAD template. 
and run the report. This just takes a second to three to run through. And the initial report it gives me is checked out files. Now, at the moment, there are no files checked out. And so that's why we're just seeing a, a full pie in the pie chart there. What I'm more interested in, if we look under here, is the state of the files. So which files are in work in progress, which files are in review, which files are released. So if we change it to state, we can see a little pie graph here showing the, the green is 7% uh, are in review, 40% released, and 52% are still work in progress. And we can even show that in the model by hitting the colour coding or colour mapping button. And we can now see that the work in progress files have appeared in yellow, the for review files have appeared in green, and the released ones are in red. Just clear that for a second. We can also isolate that and say, I just want to see the work in progress. So I double click on the work in progress segment of the pie chart. I can just colour the work in progress ones. I can even isolate them so that it fades the other, other parts out. So if we're looking at parts inside um, of the model, then we'll see it a little easier with the parts faded out. You can even see the, uh, the dialogue here fades as well to help us review the model. Okay, so clear color mapping. We may want to look at the all the review and the work in progress. We can double click on, uh, double click on two segments, apply the color mapping, and I can now see all the parts that aren't effectively aren't released. Just look at all the parts that are released. There is something inside there, so let's just switch the uh, isolation on so it fades the rest of the parts out, and I can see the impeller in there and all the nuts and bolts as well around the outside of the model. Okay, so design manager, I'm getting a good overview of, of, of what state the files are at within the life cycle. Um, now I can also, within the, the standard uh, template, to change to view things like category, designer, project, they're all the same projects. I give them switch on material. So it'll show me a pie chart, isolating which material is which. So for sustainability, for recyclable ability, we can, uh, we can assess what portion of the model is a, of what particular um, material. So let's again, color code them and isolate. Look at the whole thing. Okay. Now, these reports can also be generated um, as PDFs, as PDF reports. We're going to do that in, uh, in CAD, uh, sorry, in the Vault Client. Let's close that down. Come back to the Vault Client. And now we come to the blower. And we're going to run a report. So you can see the report button up here with the blower folder selected. We can also run reports on, uh, on saved searches. Let's run the report. And this takes a, a second to three, up it pops. Uh, and we're now looking at a printable report for, uh, for that particular assembly. So looking through at the uh, work in progress review and released files, also categorized by the, uh, the, the category of the file. Okay. So that's looking at the, uh, the in-CAD reports and the in-Vault client reports. Um, we're also going to touch on some searching tips as well. So as a, as a design manager, I want to make, make sure I can extract information from the database. Um, I think search tools are often overlooked in, in many databases. Um, so whatever database you're using, it's worth learning a few of the more advanced searching techniques, even in something like Outlook or your CRM system or your, your ERP system. Just learning a few advanced search um, techniques can save a lot of time when it comes to, uh, to retrieving information from your database. So most people tend to use this uh, quick search tool in Vault and they'll type in search term, hit return, 
and it will find all the files where that word appears somewhere in the database for that particular uh, search term. So it doesn't have to appear in the file name. You can see there the word exhaust doesn't appear in the file name. It appears in the description. Okay, in some cases, you can't even see where it appears because it appears somewhere in the properties. Now, if I type the word mount in there as well, what it will now search for is what, what's called an AND search. So it will only res, uh, res, uh, return results from the search where the word exhaust and the word mount appears somewhere in the database for those, uh, those files. They don't have to be in order. They don't even have to be in the same um, property. We can see in this first case, the word exhaust appears, but mount's nowhere to be seen. But if we look in the part number, it's in there. And similarly, if we look in this second one, we can see the word mount appears and exhaust appears in the part number down here. This one, we can see exhaust mount appears uh, within the, uh, the file name and the part number. So this is an AND search, and an AND search generally reduces the number of results. Okay, as opposed to an OR search. And we can actually do an OR search in this dialog as well. Okay, if we type in OR, it doesn't have to be an uppercase. I tend to type that just to uh, help me visualize the difference between a search term and what we call a Boolean. So now we'll find all files where the word exhaust or the word mount appears in the, in the results. So we can see now there are 24 results where there were three before. Okay, so you've got an AND search, which is the default. So without putting the word AND in there, Bolt will do an AND search. We can pop the word OR in there, and it will give us a search based on whether the word exhaust or the word mount appears in the, uh, in the results. Okay, now let's have a look at, um, at wild cards and word boundaries. If I type the word EX, okay, we just have one result. And the EX is actually nothing to do with the X in exhaust there. If I click on that, we can see EX space dash space one, two, three, four is the part number for that particular part. And it's that EX it's picking up. It's not picking the EX up or the EX from the, the rest of the, uh, the terms that have exhaust in them because we've hit what's called a word boundary or technically a token boundary, but it's a, it's a boundary of a word. So where there, um, if there was a, a space after the EX, which there is in this case, that's why it's found it, but because there are more letters after the EX, it won't find the rest of the, uh, the words for exhaust. What we can do with that is we can add what's called a wild card. So we put an asterisk in there. This means EX followed by any number of characters, any kind of character. So this will now find the word exhaust, okay? So it'll have to, the word will have to start with EX and can end in anything. So exhaustive, exhausting, exhausted, it can pick up. Um, if I put an asterisk at the beginning of the word, so note we have 17 results down here. If I put an asterisk at the beginning of the search term, now it'll find any entry, and we now have 55 search results. So we'll find any entry where the word X appears somewhere. Now, in some cases, we may find that this is actually, you can see there's no X anywhere on here. But if we look at the system, the life cycle this uses is the quadra flexible life cycle. And there you can see is the EX. So be careful with those wildcards because you can end up with too many search results. And you can also use a question mark. Okay, to represent one letter. Okay, so where the asterisk is zero or many, any letter zero or many times, the question mark insists on something being there, one or many. But it's just what sorry, one, um, but it has to it has to exist. Okay, so it won't uh, won't accept EXAUST. If there was actually a file called EXAUST, that wouldn't appear in the results simply because it has to have something there where that question mark is. So the, the most commonly used wildcard is the asterisk, the, uh, the, the zero or many of any character. Okay, there is actually another Boolean search that you can do, but it doesn't work in this, this box here. It only works in the, uh, the full advanced find dialog box. Uh, and what we can do is we can search for, let's search the description, where the description contains exhaust, not mount. So it will find all results where the word exhaust appears, 
But if the word mount appears in the file, it'll exclude that from the search results. Let's add that to the search and find. And we can see we have four files where the word exhaust appears, but the word mount does not appear. Okay, and I must stress that you can only use this not Boolean within this advanced find dialog box. Okay, and again, if we were to add additional search criteria, it's an and search. So all of those criteria must be met for the search results to appear. So we're taking thousands and thousands of files and reducing the list down to, uh, to a handful to, to focus in on the information that we need. Okay, also remember that uh, it must appear up to a, a token boundary or a word boundary. The word exhaust, it will find exhaust, but it'll also find exhaust with underscores and, and zero or two, because changing from a letter to a, a punctuation mark or a letter to a number would be considered a word boundary or a token boundary. Okay. So production manager, next. So a production manager, uh, or any, indeed anybody in production may want to view and print the drawings, uh, view and measure the models, and we're going to raise an ECO as well. So let's go and have a look at the drawing for this. Now I'm using Vault Professional 2022, uh, and in 2022, Autodesk made the Forge Viewer available to us in the client. This is also the viewer that the web client uses. Um, those of you that have never seen this before, you can actually use this viewer in the, the free uh, online version of this Forge viewer, the Autodesk online viewer. Uh, so it's viewer.autodesk.com. And you can drag and drop all sorts of file types, not just Autodesk files. So if you want to view a step file, you can drag and drop the step file in. I think there is a maximum limit of 50 meg though. So some of the, the big step files um, you might find fail on the online viewer. But you can drag and drop files onto that online viewer and view files in exactly the same way as we're doing here. Now, to get a better uh, view of what's going on, let's fill the screen with the viewer. Okay. And I'm going to use the, the document browser just to go and pick uh, a sheet with a bit more going on. Let's pick sheet two. A bit more going on in here. So as with the design review, um, we can pan and zoom around. Now, note that with Design Review, you have to install a separate viewer. The Forge viewer is delivered from the Vault server and is part of the Vault client, so you don't need to install a separate viewer for this. One of the main benefits I see with this Forge viewer as well is fixes a limitation that I found with the uh, Design Review, which is uh, measuring. When we measure, Let's say, for instance, we've got a dimension there, which is 520, which gives us the depth of the frame. What I can't see, though, is the overall depth with the exhaust on the front there. And we can see the measure tool in the Forge viewer gives us deltas. So I can now see the Y and X delta rather than just the point to point dimension, which is all we would get in design review. So it adds a lot more information within the measure environment. We have all the usual markup tools. So down here, we just switch measure off. We've got the markup tools in here, so we can add clouds, we can add callouts, or callouts with clouds. Okay. And these can be saved out as snapshots. And this will save out as a PNG file into a nominated location. Earlier. Okay, so this is the Forge viewer, uh, viewer that's built in to the, um, the Vault 2022 client. It can be switched back. So you can choose under options to switch back to Design Review. If you so choose. Um, in all honesty, Design Review prints better than the, uh, the Autodesk viewer because the Autodesk viewer prints from the, the, the snapshots, the bitmaps. So you don't get quite the same resolution, but you still have the print snapshot button there, which allows you to, uh, to print these files out. And you can see a preview. You just don't get, get quite the same fidelity that you get in, uh, in design review at the moment. Okay, let's have a look at the assembly. 
So again, we're going to look at uh, the assembly in the Forge viewer. In fact, let's fill the window with it. We've got the space, let's use it. Okay. So we see a preview of the model. And again, we've got um, a number of, uh, of tools. We've got the, the, the markup tools, the measure tools, uh, the deltas again, we'll get deltas based on X, Y, and Z, not just X and Y. If I picked one with an actual Z value, it might, uh, might help. There we go, so we get the X, Y, and Z deltas in there. We also have some tools to help us visualize the model. So let's just come out the measuring tool and go into a section tool. So I can take a section on a particular plane. And we can slice this plane through. I'm just grab the arrow. So you can see inside the motor, inside the impeller housing and the exhaust. And this allows us to uh, take measurements inside here as well. Another convenient way of looking inside the model is to, uh, to create the or give us an exploded view of the model. If we hit explode, we get a little slider. We can slide this slider up and down to blow the components apart so we can see elements inside the model. The tools we have in here, we've got the, uh, the model browser, so we can see the full tree. As we click on elements, it will zoom to those parts of the model for us. Okay. And you can see it's also turning the other components translucent. Right click show all, brings them all back. Click on properties, we can also see properties based on the selected item. So things like all your, your eye properties that uh, you would get in the model, or the properties that are pulled out of Vault itself. Once again, you've got the print button from here to print the snapshot of the screen. Okay. So a much more functional viewer, plus you don't have to install anything to make it work. It just, it just works based on the, the Vault installation. Um, doesn't need the, uh, the extra design review installing. Okay, so the production manager on the shop floor may also spot an issue, so we could raise an ECO. So let's uh, raise an ECO based on the components in here. Let's go and find In, uh, searching for the exhaust all this time. So let's raise an ECO on the exhaust. Actually, no, the propeller's released. The exhaust isn't released. We can see there it's in, under review. Now, if the propeller's released, then we'd need to raise an ECO to be able to generate the documentation for it. So let's, uh, let's right click and add this to a change order. So ECO stands for engineering change order. This is a way of documenting the, uh, the change. Okay, so life cycle allows us to, to manage that change, whereas the ECOs allow us to document the uh, information relating to it. So we add the, uh, or create an ECO, it's generated the next ECO number for us. Okay, so we then add the information relating to this, this change. say 31.5, okay. We can also specify uh, various properties down here. So in this particular case, we've got reason for change. So this is an error correction. And what do we do with the stock disposition? So let's rework it. So if we uh, we have some in stock, we're going to uh, rebore it out to 31.5. 
Come into records. Now, because we're editing a part, we also need to make sure that we update the assemblies and the drawings associated to that part. So I can say add related, and you can see that it's pulled in the assembly and the drawing. It looks up the, uh, the, the family tree, as it were, to the parents of this particular part. You can see we've got an assembly and a drawing associated to it. We'll add those to the list as well. So these are files that will also be affected by the change. Some of the comments, when well, we're not going to add a comment in here, um, comments will automatically get added as we move a file uh, or move an ECO through its life cycle. Um, we can add manual comments or you can actually uh, have it so that a particular individual is set as a reviewer and all they can do is actually view the ECO and add comments to it. Uh, it could be a, a director or a manager. Who can add his uh, add his two penneth into the uh, to the ECO process? We can't do anything else. Can't progress it. Can't change any files within this uh, this this ECO or within the vault. Can just review and add comments. Now files, not to be confused with records. Records are the files that are going to be changed by this engineering change order. Files are just supporting documentation. This could be photographs or emails or imported information relating to this change. We could come into the uh, the assembly. Uh, in fact, it's not, it's not the assembly that we're working on, so we'll come into the part. Again, we've got the forge viewer in this environment. Let's just do an F to fit to view. And we could use our markup tools, draw on it, or indeed use the clouds and the callouts again. Okay. And save the snapshot. So again, it's, it's creating a, a safe snapshot for us. Okay. And we're able to attach those files after the fact. Routing allows us to specify who's involved in the process. You can see at the moment, just administrator and, and me uh, are involved in the approver, change administrator, change requester, and so on. So these are different roles within the ECO process. And the process is uh, outlined showing us uh, the different stages of the ECO. So the routing can be different for each project. So I've got three different projects. I've also got a training um, routing as well for when we're doing training courses on Vault. So project A, different people are involved in the process. So Desmond designer there is the engineer responsible for making the changes. He can also request a change. Manny manager, he's the person involved in approving um, and administering the, uh, the ECO. And you've got production Pete there that can just view and review the files. He's also a notification user. This means once the CCO is released out the other end, then production Pete will get notified that uh, there's a file that he needs to go and attend to. Okay, so we'll hit save. That saves the ECO in the system. Um, it may be that we don't have all the information yet to proceed, so we can leave that sat at the create stage until we've got more, uh, more information gathered together. Um, when we're ready, we can hit the submit button and submit it to the next stage, which is the open stage. Okay, so now we'll see the change order appear on the change order tab next to, next to the, uh, the actual file itself. Okay. And we can right click, we can respond, we can submit it to the next stage, or we can view and respond. So we'd like to open it up in a view, a non-editable view of the, uh, of the ECO. Okay. And you can see there the comments, there's, there's the simple act of moving it from submit to open adds an automatic comment. It captures who, what, and when within the comment section for us. So you've got full traceability. So next we need to submit this to the next stage. So that moves to the work stage. If I switch the status panel on, we can see the different stages it goes through. So from work, when it's in this stage here, the uh, responsible engineers will take over and perform the change. I'm not going to go through and, uh, and do that in this case. We'll submit that to the next stage. Okay, so this is the warning telling me that files can't be 
in the working progress state. So the assembly and the drawing are in the working progress state. So this little warning, a little capture to say there's still work to be done. Okay, so I'd need to action those before I can move this along. I'm going to leave this in this particular state. We're not going to close it off. We'll leave it in the work state. I don't want to start pushing files through the, uh, the life cycle for no reason at this, this point. So we'll close this down. We've got an ECO that's work in progress on this, uh, on this particular model. Okay. Who's next? So project engineer. Reviewing designs. Now, when a project engineer is reviewing the design, now again, this is not inside of, uh, of Inventor. This is at the uh, Vault client level. So we've already looked at the Forge viewer and what the Forge viewer can do. So they would essentially use this viewer to review the design, review the drawings, check the various models, um, and they may also be responsible for liaising with the customer uh, and making sure that customers are, uh, they've got customer approval for these, these designs. So what I can do here is we can take the, let's just do a quick search. So I'll do a, a search in here and we'll search the state. So I don't just want to find all the files. I just want to find the files that are in review. So let's go and find the S's, the state. So we're looking for all the files that are in review and we can see there's the exhaust assembly there. And that's the one that we're interested in. Uh, we can also share, uh, save this, so if we can save this search. I'm the project manager for this, uh, this whole blower assembly, so I want to make sure I can do a regular search to find all files that are for review, because it's something I need to do frequently. So we'll save this search. I'm going to call this, I'm going to call it, I know it says for review, but I'm calling it in review because I just noticed I forgot to delete that old one. So this basically, whenever I, I hit this, uh, this search folder, what it will do, it'll rerun the search. It doesn't just save the search results, it's saved the search criteria. So as more files become uh, up for review or as files get progressed on and released, they'll, become, they'll add and, and remove themselves from the search results. So each time I hit this or hit refresh, it'll rerun the search for me. So this blower housing is the one I'm interested in. Now, this Forge viewer that we're looking at in here, what I can do is I can now share this with a customer. So I'm going to select the file, hit share view. Um, we've got the option to hide component names and hide part properties to help protect our intellectual property. I'm not going to do that in this case. I'm going to unhide those, click share. Now that uh, Forge viewer I mentioned earlier, the one that's in the cloud, the free viewer, this is actually publishing itself to the free viewer and will result in a link. So I can hit copy link and I can copy that to the clipboard, paste that into an email, send it to the customer. Uh, and I can also view in browser. If I hit view in browser, close this window down. If we come and look at the shared views tab here, we can see that that exhaust view has now appeared in my shared views in Vault. But I clicked the open in browser. If I just pull my Firefox across from the other screen, this is what the recipient would see. Okay, so this is using the free viewer. They don't need any software other than a, an internet browser. So this works in Firefox, Chrome, Edge. Um, and they can see this model and review this model. You can see they've got the section tools, the explored tools the markup tools, okay? So if we do a, a cloud around this area here and add some text. Please check the aperture size, hit save. Okay, so you can see this again. This is in the web client. So this is in, uh, sorry, not the web client. This is in my Firefox. This has got nothing to do with Vault. This is me sat on a completely different site somewhere as a customer reviewing this information. And I've just added that comment onto this, uh, this model. So I'm just going to move that back over there. Come back into my Vault client, hit refresh. And we can see there's one comment appeared. 
next to my uh, next to my model. When we expand it, we can see. If I click on that again, it opens in the uh, the external viewer. We can see the history of that comment. Okay, there's a little complaint there. That's morning because the um, the little bitmap which shows the weld caterpillar isn't uh, is missing off my machine. Okay, so check the aperture size. Okay, so we've checked the aperture sizes. Alks. Done the calcs and the aperture size is adequate. Okay. So again, 50 miles across town for the customers when they do a, a review. We can see my response has come through. Okay. And what I can do in the Vault client is I can mark that as resolved. And that little thread now is signed off. Okay, so this is our, our shared um, element. You can see there it expires in 30 days. So you don't end up with uh, the cloud all stuffed with thousands of shares. They will expire after a while. Um, you can actually remove them. So you can, you can delete it directly. Um, you can see also there we've got the option to show resolve. So that, that comment that we've ticked off, we've signed off. If I hit the little tick there, shows me the, uh, the history again. Okay. We also have the option in here. So back in the in Firefox, in my web browser, I've got the option to export this. And this comes out as a PDF. This is one I actually did earlier, and perhaps it's trying to down, uh, put it in my downloads, which is already full of uh, an example I did earlier on. So it shows in here the markups and the, the comments. So you've got a little uh, report of the interaction relating to that review. So we're able to conduct design reviews remotely, looking at 3D models in the free online uh, Forge viewer. There you go, there's the address, viewer.autest.com. Okay, the comments that we add are captured by whoever I'm logged in as. It's free to set up a, a login account for Auto, Autodesk. Most of you will probably have login accounts anyway because you'll be uh, working on Autodesk licenses. So it captures who and when the, uh, the information was captured within the viewer. Okay, so finally, last quick one. We've got Quality Manager. So this is really looking at those ECOs that I created earlier. Um, we're able to view all those ECOs either against the actual part that, uh, that we raised an ECO against. So if I go back to that propeller, we'll look at the change order tab. So let's say, for instance, um, there's some sort of contention, the customer comes back and, and contests a, a change to a particular part, we can bring up the ECO and we can view all the information relating to the ECO, possibly including an email from the customer saying this needs to change. And this is where the files and all the records that you keep uh, come in. And we can also see who was involved in that process. Um, or it could be that uh, the ISO auditor is sat with your, uh, your quality manager. And we can then go into the change order list and see all the ECOs that have been raised against all the files. You can see there's one that's still work in progress there. And these are the other ECOs that have been raised over the years. So we can come back to one and review all the information, which files were affected, so the, the part and the drawing, who was involved. So you can see production Pete raised the ECO, um, Desmond designer made the changes and money manager signed them off. all the supporting documentation, showing us all the, uh, the files that were involved in the process, including marked up prints. And again, the Forge viewer can view DWFs as well. So all your existing DWFs are, uh, are still viewable in the new Forge viewer. Okay. So that really brings the webinar to a close. I've not kept you for too long, 45 minutes in, so I didn't get too carried away. 
Okay, so if there are no questions from anybody, I'll thank you for your time this afternoon. Um, please get in touch if, uh, if you've got any questions and uh, we'll speak to you all again soon. Okay, thank you.